we're going to have a look at the topic of sound and have a look at some sound waves and what they do, how they work and we all know that sound waves are a longitudinal type of wave and if you didn't know, well, now you do and it requires a medium to work in so let's go and see if we can have a look at this one first so let's go and have a look at an experiment I've got several experiments that I want to have a look at today Let's move that out of the way and what we're going to have a look at is I've got a pump and I've got this connected to a bell jar and in the bell jar I've got suspended a bell. It's quite apt to have a bell I suppose in a bell jar, it's got a little motor, little battery and if I sound this it makes a horrible sound now in this bell jar I've got at the top a little hook and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over the hook it's held on by a, a hairband and we're going to turn it on now I'm going to put this onto a plate and this plate here has got a hole in it so we can take the air out I'm just going to make sure it's fitting well round here and we're going to put the bell jar on top now you can just about hear it and we were losing the camera there right so I can just about hear it we're trying to make sure we've got some sound so you can and now I'm going to turn the pump on and this is going to take air out this is going to make some noise anyway see if we get a vacuum we're getting a vacuum and I'm starting to lose the sound of the bell just about still hear it over the noise of the pump of course Let's see if that's enough. Can you hear the bell? It's still going. And if we now reverse the process, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let air back in. And as the air comes back in, we can hear the bell ringing again. So, this is the sort of classic bell jar experiment, with the bell in it of course, and the bell can't be heard when it's in a vacuum, because sound requires a medium to travel in. So there is our little bell experiment. Now sound comes in all types of sort of wavelengths and we can hear those differently and to hear some of those I've got a way of trying to do this and what I've got, I've got some of these tuning forks and if I 
sound one of these tuning forks you may be able to hear it that's going to be quiet so what I'm trying to do now is put this close to the microphone so you can actually hear it not very good is it no there must be a better way of doing it now I've got here just a little wooden box it's not exciting it's just a wooden box it's got a hole at one end and what I've got is a tuning fork and let's sound this tuning fork it's just similar to that one no can't hear it let's make it so you can Well, I can just about hear it, but you can't. Let's see something about what's going on with this. I'm just going to bang it. And if I put this next to this... Can you hear it was making this horrible sort of banging sound? That's because these two are moving in and out, in and out, in and out. Well, what we're going to try and do is I'm going to attach this tuning fork to this box. Now we'll do it manually the first time. Did you hear the difference? If I attach the tuning fork properly and then let's bang it. It makes a much louder sound. Now, this is the note A. It, this is set at 440 hertz. You almost certainly won't be able to read it, but we're going to try anyway. So there it says 440 hertz. Now, this is the frequency in which it makes it sound. If I look at some of the other tuning forks, I've got a whole raft of them here. They've got written on them the note that they are. I'm just going to turn these over so I can get them in a pattern. So I've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And you'll see that if I try and line these up more or less, that what you've got is a difference in length. The lower note, this one, the C, sounds like that, whereas the higher one sounds different. Let's try both of them together. First of all, bottom C, this is 256 hertz or waves per second. And this is the higher one. both of them. You might just be able to hear them. Now what we're going to try is a very simple experiment. I'm going to take this box and I'm going to bang each of these different tuning forks and put them on the box and let's listen to them. Certainly a bit louder. Next one, this is D. Not very good. E. A bit better. 
F. G. A. B. And C. Which was the loudest? And the answer is very clearly A. Now why is this? What, what's going on? What makes that A sound best with this box? And it's all to do with the length of the box. So if you get the right length of the box something interesting happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an experiment now to have a look at what's going on. And then I'll just put these tuning forks out the way for a moment because what we're going to do is we're going to bring in another box and here is my other box now it's very much like the box that we've got here in that this has got a little plunger and if I pull the plunger down then this box this tube gets longer and longer so what I can do is I can change the length of this box to suit the tuning fork so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pull this tube down and we'll see when we get the loudest sound here we go Try that again. If I make the box shorter, nothing make it the same length as this box and we get a much louder sound let's make this a bit longer not much so if I can get this box to be the right length to fit in with this tuning fork the wavelength of this tuning fork we're setting up a much louder sound and the sound is going down this box and bouncing back and being amplified we're setting up a resonance pattern and if I set this box to be the right length this tube then I've set this there same length we get the loudest sound If I do this with a different tuning fork, and let's do it with C, I need to then change the length of the tube to get the right sound. Well, making this short is obviously not working. Let's try making it longer. Can you hear the difference? And so this is considerably longer here than we had for the note A. 
and if I go for the note C but this time this is an octave difference remember the difference Let's see what happens with this one. I'm going to make the, this tube shorter. And we can see that the length here is shorter than the length of the box. I'm just measuring with my fingers. There's the length of this tube and the length of the box. So we need to make the boxes the right length to get the sound the best we can. And this is what we find with many instruments that we can change the length of the instrument to get the best sound and I now apologize for the next bit of video I apologize probably to most people who can play an instrument I especially apologize to trombonists right now I've got a trombone here it's a plastic trombone it does work right so what we got with the trombone is the ability to change the length of the slide and as we do so the note can actually change. I'm going to try and make the same note. <laughs> I'm trying to make the same note but I'm hearing it's different. Why? Well the sound is traveling further along this tube. We can start off with a very simple mouthpiece. This is a trombone mouthpiece and if I play it oh, sounds pretty pathetic. Oh. So we attach it to a tube and the sound can now travel down this tube, round the bend. Sound travels quite well round bends, around this bend, around that bend and it comes out at the bell the other end and it's enlarging which is going to have the effect of trying to amplify it. And that makes it sort of a little bit better. I do have another trombone which is really awful and uh, I had two minds whether to play it for you and it's a piece of copper pipe copper tubing but it's the same length the same thickness and it sounds really awful worse even than the trombone now the trombone I can make different shapes with my mouth and I can make different notes without changing the length <coughs> So I can make some different notes, but if I make those notes and change the slide to change the length, yeah, and I'm really not very good at playing the trombone. My, my bits of playing the trombone tend to be for my science lesson, so I'll, uh, I'll move that one back out of the way and cheer everyone up. Don't want it to fall. Right, so we've got this idea of sound. We've got this idea that we can change the length and it, it's going to make a better resonance pattern. Now we can actually do some science with this and I'm going to do something a little bit better. What I've got is a little microphone here and what I can do is I can plug this microphone in and this is at 602.9 Hertz. And here it makes a sound. 
Now, if we change the length of this tube, we can hear about here, it's making a difference. I'm going to put a little marker on this one. Make it a bit longer, it makes a different sound. Louder sound there, let's put another marker. nice when I turn it off. Now if we look at this let's see if we can see anything here in common. My trombone knocked the thing over. Let's measure the distance. I've got 28 centimeters from this one to this one and I've got 27 and a half centimetres from that one to that one. Seems that there's a, a pattern here. We've got some sort of pattern. Right, let's move those and let's change the frequency here. So I'm just going to switch it on and change the frequency for you. There we are, 390 391 Hertz. Let's see what happens when I move this now. It's about there, isn't it? We're getting some sort of sound. So we seem to get some different sounds and I can measure this one again from here to here that's 43 centimeters measure from here to there it's 44 centimeters and considering I'm only measuring this extremely roughly we're getting some interesting sound differences so we're getting these resonant sounds there what's going on well I think we need to find out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this a little bit closer and we're going to have a look and see what happens to this when we put it near the microphone so what I've got what I had was some wire And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend the length 
of the speaker so that we can reach the microphone. I'm going to plug red into red and black into black. Right, let's have a look and see what we've got. Now, looking at the phone, and I'm going to put it the right way round, and we're going to put this microphone, which I've got, and you can just see it here. It's a it's little fluffy bit. It's just going to go in front of this. And what I've got is I've got this plugged in to the PC. And I've got a program called Audacity, which is a free program. It's superb. And what we're going to do is we're now going to see if we can record this so let's see the setup we can see this one Paul's just going to try and zoom in for us so we can sort of see what's going on right so if I set, set that, that one, one you, you can, can see that I've got, got a microphone, microphone set up with this, this loudspeaker, loudspeaker and, and this, this is then attached, attached to my PC, PC. And, and then, then we've, we've got, got this set up on the screen, screen so we, we can, can see what's going on. on. So, so let's, let's give ourselves, ourselves a little sound. sound. And the microphone hopefully can pick this up. So let's have a look at this using Audacity. And I'm just going to first of all clear off anything I've got. And let's see what happens. Okay, so I've been recording a little sound and really to sort of do anything with this, if I just play it back to you, you might hear it, but not well. It's dreadfully quiet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sound and I'm going to amplify it so we can just on the software here simply amplify it quite a lot and if I play it back to you now sounds a little bit better so the sound is not great it's not very loud but what I want to do is I want to have a look at this so let's have a look and I'm going to zoom in and you can see that this is the waveform that we've got so as I'm playing it we've got this constant note so you can see that this is a very what we call a sinusoidal waveform uh, and it's much better than if we try the other version and we'll just go on to the other camera just for a minute because we're going to see uh, me try and do this so we're going to try and record um, a different sound now and uh, apologies again to most people who like sound uh, why did I choose the trombone? It made the best noise that I could actually find. And it actually gives a, an idea of the fact that when we can change the length. If I use the trumpet, then it's not so obvious that you're changing the length of the tubing. So we're going to try this. So I'm going to delete the little program that I've got. And we're going to set this up to record so let me 
set this one going. Well, you have to admit that was fairly awful. And we've got really quite a nice sort of sound. Um, you'll notice that this one I may not need to amplify much. And we've got what we call clipping going on here where basically the system couldn't cope with the amount of noise that I was making. Let's just try it. Hmm. Let's take a little bit of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply amplify it make it a little bit bigger, probably didn't need much. And what I want to do is I want to go in and have a look at this. And you can see that now this sound doesn't have the sinusoidal wave, the up and down, but it does have a regular repeating pattern. And this is the format, if you like, of a trombone. This is its digital fingerprint. And you can see that it's got a particular shape. And as we go along, we can try different notes that I played. And you can see that different notes look different. Until I finish. So we've got here the shape of a musical note and it looks very different to the sound of the speaker. I'm going to try the speaker now and I'm going to try seeing if we can do something with the speaker. So I've set now this little speaker up and I've positioned it in front of the microphone. So I've, I didn't bother to stand this particular microphone up. It's a stereo mic. There's my speaker in front and what we're going to do is I'm going to set this to have some different notes. So let's record with Audacity and see what happens. So, I've recorded three different notes. And there you can see the three different notes. We've got this one. And what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to amplify all of them, just so we can see them. Now, we did have quite a lot of problems trying to get this set up. And the reason we had a lot of problems trying to get these set up is simply that Windows, bless it, normally wants to switch off noise suppression. So when we ran this, uh, it's basically switched off the sound after a few moments thinking it was noise. Well, probably was. And so we've, we've eventually got this working by switching off noise suppression. So let's have a look at what we've got and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the first one here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to magnify it. And you can see that we've got this waveform. Now I'm not going to magnify any more but what I am going to do is jump to the next wave. Do you notice any difference? Let's go to the much higher wave.
and that one I am going to have to just do something to so I'll get that one better so there you can see the wave very close together that's the highest note and then we've got the lowest note so our highest note medium note and there's our lowest note and we can see that the wavelength the point from the top of a wave to the next top of a wave or it doesn't matter the bottom of a wave to the next bottom of the wave or where it crosses the midpoint to the next one this here is basically our wavelength and you can see that as we get the notes to be higher then this wavelength simply there to there gets shorter closer together and it's ridiculously close in one of those So there is sort of a basic introduction to waves. What have we discovered with waves? We've got then different wave lengths. So let's see if we can summarize some of these bits and pieces. So for our sound, we can see that it does require a medium to run in. We've got here, the sound runs in a medium, uh, we tried it in air and it's okay in air, but in something like water, sound conducts really well, and if we try a solid, then it works really fantastically. So we do want a medium. And we showed that we can't operate in a vacuum by using simply making a vacuum and not being able to hear my sound waves work at all. We've looked at here then a tuning fork. What have we seen with the tuning fork? That if you want to get it to amplify the best then you need to have basically a box of the correct length so this idea of the the wave it's got to have there and then it amplifies it changes its amplitude we can see that when we looked at the tuning fork this had a very regular wave whereas when I looked at the trombone it had a particular shape that's repeated your ear can hear a variety of different sounds at sort of all sorts of wavelengths your ear can hear from about something like about 20 hertz up to somewhere in the region of let's say 20,000 hertz if I gradually turn the frequency up then at certain point I can't hear it anymore but generally students can so we've got this idea with sound waves now we can use sound waves for all sorts of things uh, one of the popular ones you can use it for echo sounding and that is where you simply have your C let's have our boat excellent boat here and what they can do is they can send sound waves back to the seabed and that will then reflect back to the boat 
so we have a microphone and speakers and we can measure then the distance to the seabed we actually measure the distance to the seabed and back again and then we do half that distance so it's always going to be half the distance there so here if I'm measuring my ship's depth here it's going to be a half of the velocity times the time half of VT so we've got some bits and pieces there we can see that the notes if we change the pitch of the note then we've either got a low note or we can have a high note how about though changing the amplitude how loud it is well if we look at the difference here we can see something else so we're going to do our last experiment and what I've got with this setup is I've got my loudspeaker next to the microphone again road microphones like this weren't designed to stay on tables not like this it'll, it'll be all right it's a stereo mic i put the microphone very close to the loudspeaker now what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to make one change what i can do on this amplifier and i'm just going to show you now that I can actually amplify the signal so I've got a little knob that I can just hear so I'm going to set the frequency down to something a bit more reasonable and this is about 492 Hertz I'm going to see if we make any difference if I amplify it a little bit I'm not going to amplify it very much. So, let's have a look at the setup. And let's see what happens when I do the recording. So, here we go. Hmm. Well, the amplification is not working well on that one. I'm not getting enough. Let's try it again. Right, so we're going to set this up again. So I'll see if we can just try it once more. And you can see that I didn't do it terribly evenly. But if we take our wave here, let's just have a look at a little bit of this. We'll just try and, first of all, amplify it. And you can see that I have got an increase here. If I just try and play this back. getting bigger let's have a look at the waves and what I want to try and show you that is the wave length here is staying the same so that's two blocks but as I move along it's getting higher
and higher. And higher. So this is changing the amplitude of the wave and changing the amplitude of the wave is adjusting the volume. So we've got here the pitch and the amplitude is where I'm going to keep it the same So it's the same number of waves it's just bigger. We've changed the amplitude as opposed to changing the pitch when we're changing the wavelength. Or if you prefer we could change the frequency. There we are. Some simple bits and pieces to start you out on looking at waves and in particular looking at sound waves. I've got lots of videos on waves which we'll link to and I will see you next time when we do some more GCSE physics. Topic by topic. If you like Brilliant. Subscribe. Wonderful. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Stay safe.